this um, is not a timer for me to stop talking tonight. Uh, just so you know. So we'll we'll get to it uh, at the end. But don't jump the gun. I know some might be anxious to tell me when it runs out that it has run out. So I'm just going to leave that there for a minute. Our theme is press on. And we are uh, launching from a passage in Philippians chapter 3 verse 12. Starting in verse 12. Alright, I tried three times. Alright. Am I still? Whoop. Okay. Stay with me just a second. Chase, is there any trick? Nope. Let me back up. Am I doing this or are you doing it? Okay. Uh, next slide. Is that my cue for you? Next slide, that'll work? Yeah, we're close. Okay. Yeah, y'all don't have anywhere to be tonight, do you? Okay. <clears throat> so verse 12, starting in verse 12, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect. So our first lesson we pointed out that we're not perfect. Um, God's still working on us. He's still working on you. He's still working on anyone you know. He's still working on people that are acting right and people that aren't acting right. So he's working on all of us. But I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. He has took hold. Christ has taken hold of each one of us. If you're a Christian in particular, if you're saved, He snatched you from headed toward hell and put you in His grace and in a safe state. And so we belong to Jesus. That phrase, you know, I encouraged us yesterday to use that phrase, I belong to Jesus. You can use it in many different circumstances. I used it uh, either last night or early today something happened and I was uh, stressed about it you know anytime you're anxious about something whether you're frustrated or worried whatever it is angry hey I belong to Jesus and my the situation that I had was just something I was worried about so I prayed about it and then I remembered that st that phrase those words I belong to Jesus I find comfort in that and I think you will too. So we belong to Christ. All right, next slide. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind. Let's go one more. There we go. And straining forward to what lies ahead. So forgetting what lies behind. Things in our past, sometimes we can get, we can get crossways with each other and it completely wrecks our service to God. We're not useful to God if we're hurting and pouting and frustrated with each other. And so sometimes we need to forgive. Uh, sometimes we, it's our own shame that we're dealing with, and we need to forgive ourselves. So what's in the past, we need to let it go, straining forward to what lies ahead. And that's where we're going tonight, straining forward to what lies ahead. All right, look at there, that worked. Um, so, tonight's theme is full steam ahead. Tonight we're going to talk about what the church should be about. What you and I should be about. We should be working. We should be serving God. We should be, we should be pedal to the metal. We should be excited about God and what can we do to bring glory to Him. What can we do to further the kingdom. What can we do to encourage someone, pick someone up, serve in some way. So, Romans 12.10 says, Love one another with brotherly affection outdo one another in showing honor so verse 11 do not be slothful in zeal don't be lazy about God's business don't be slothful do not be slothful in zeal be fervent in spirit and fervent means passion it means on fire be on fire for God serve the Lord Verse 12, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, 
be constant in prayer. What do we do in this messed up world? I mean, we have to live in it. And it's more our society is getting further from God every year, isn't it? What do we do in this world? And the answer is we serve God. We do the same thing we have always needed to do, serve God. Serve God with zeal. Serve God with passion. We don't need to let off the gas. We need to hit the gas. Serve Him with everything we have. Now, there are times when our present situation is hard. Well, rejoice in the future. Rejoice, what does it say? Rejoice in hope. If your present is hard, your future is bright because that's heaven. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. So we need to serve, rejoice, have patience, and pray. But we need to be about it. We need to be moving. We need to be active. We need to be uh, full of energy. That's what this is about. A few years ago, we had a flood in Sand Springs, uh, in particular at, at that time. And I, uh, a word that became really important in our community was the word FEMA. You may remember, I never really paid attention to that word until uh, where I came to learn about it was Hurricane Katrina. When Hurricane Katrina happened on the news, it was, everything was about FEMA. And FEMA is a program, a federal program, to help parts of our nation uh, who have a natural disaster, for example, to be able to recover. So funds, um, services being able to brought, being brought to people who need it in times of crisis. So in Sand Springs, FEMA was important to us. Any federal aid. In, in fact, I, I remember the, uh, the vice president came, um, maybe the president, I can't remember, to Sand Springs, to our area, drove through. So we needed all the federal aid we could get. When you turn in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 3, I want us to read about a church in the first century uh, in Asia. The church was Laodicea. The book of Revelation was written to seven churches. That's not a symbolic concept. There were seven literal churches. And in our to use kind of our modern concept, uh, and terminology that would that may help it make a little more sense. We would call this the the Laodicea Church of Christ. It's kind of how we. That's how it would be for us in our day and time. It's that was. This is the Church of God of Saints in Laodicea, in the first century, and so John writes and Jesus speaks to each of the seven churches. He has a different message for each church. And his message for Laodicea was unique to them. Now, before, before we read this, history uh, tells us that in A.D. 60, which would have been prior to this, in A.D. 60, there was an earthquake in Laodicea. And Rome offered to pay for, it, for their town that needed it to be rebuilt. That's kind of their, that's first century FEMA. And history says, Laodicea said, no thank you. We don't need your money. Laodicea was a wealthy town. Uh, maybe prideful town. Oftentimes wealth and pride go hand in hand. And Laodicea, according to um, records, they told Rome, no thank you. We don't need it. We've got it. We'll rebuild ourselves. So when Jesus speaks to this church, verse 14 says, To the angel of the church at Laodicea write the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's creation. I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. Would that you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say, now look at this part, I am rich, I have prospered, I need nothing, not realizing you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. So here's a town of people who physically they're doing well. Financially they're doing well. As a people they seem to be doing well. And the church, this is the church, this isn't the community, but it's the church within that community. 
And Jesus writes to them, Jesus' message is, you think you're doing well, but you're really just going through the motions. You're on cruise control. You're just lukewarm. You're not really on fire. You're not cold, but you're not on fire. So, verse 19, he says, those whom I love, I reprove. This is the same church, Laodicea. I reprove and discipline, so be zealous and repent. He's trying to get them to repent, but what they need to repent of is they're lazy. They're lukewarm. So what does he tell them to do? He tells them to, to get on fire. Zealous. Zeal is passion. It's fire, devotion, eagerness, enthusiasm. They need to be alive. Don't you think God's people need to be alive? We need to be active. I mean, we, we need to have a balance in our step. We need to be on a mission. You ever see somebody on a mission? Sometimes um, I'll go to Walmart and I have one thing I need to get in that enormous store. And I really don't even want to waste time on that. And so I'm walking fast. I'm zigzagging. I'm going, I mean, I'm going in, in, and, in and around clothes racks, whatever. I, I'm on a mission. And cri as Christians... We are on a mission. So verse 21, he says, The one who conquers, I'll grant him to sit with me on my throne, as I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. This church, the thing they needed to conquer was lukewarm. Lukewarmness. They were lazy. They were slothful. They were, um, they were going through the motions. They didn't have passion. They didn't have fire. They weren't, they weren't really active about God's business. They needed to hit the gas. Uh, a few years ago, about 10 years ago, I, I was able to mark something off my bucket list. Uh, at the time, I had, a, I had a Mustang, and at there's a racetrack called Hallett Raceway between Tulsa and Stillwater, and uh, just a road course with twists and turns and at that racetrack well that's a part of what happened once a year there's a Mustang rally in Tulsa in June every year and part of what uh, Mustang fans do during that time some will go to the drag race and some will go to this road course in Hallett and you can pay money and you can have a coach and they will ride in the car with you helmets on they call it high-speed touring and uh, you're really not racing, but basically you're driving around that track as fast as you want to go. And um, which was a, this is a bucket list thing for me. I like cars, I always have, always like sports cars, and I like to drive um, relatively safely. And uh, so you, it got serious for me, by the way, when I learned a few things I had to do before they would let my, car beyond the track and that is uh, everything out of the trunk's got to go including the spare tire any any uh, jack any material in the truck everything's out everything out of the glove box um, the battery has to be strapped down windows rolled down now why would that be the reason is when you roll your car and you make a mess on that track and kill yourself they don't want you hurting other people as well and so when I realized that, when I come to realize that, things got a little more serious for me. But um, yeah, you have to wear, have to wear a helmet. Uh, so there are different rules that they have. But, but I got to drive that track and had a coach. You know, one thing I'll tell you is uh, there are different, there are different uh, Mustangs driving around. The thing that's unusual about it is it's, it's entirely different than any other type of driving because... Uh, with my coach telling me what to do, basically it's it's gas pedal to the floor uh, till you need to shift. So I had a manual, so shift, go to second, go for more. The the gas the accelerator is on the floor. Go to third, you get a little bit more. Now you're on a turn. You shift, you downshift. Now we're giving it all the brake we can. We're making the turn, all the braking. Uh, and gearing down that we can not to slide off the road or spin out you do that till you're halfway around the turn you shift again and now it's foot on the gas and the foot is either all the way on the gas or or on the brake as much as you can possibly brake because you go into each turn as hard as you can and it's that way all the way around it nine or ten turns 
uh, it's white knuckle. And so for some of you, that might sound uh, horrible, but I loved it. I loved it. It was awesome. It was fun. Uh, it was intense. And that's what God is telling us when he says, I want you to be about it. Not just partly, not just some. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, he says, my, belo my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding. So here's a word, abounding. Um, that's not getting by. You know, there's certain things in your life and in my life that I get by with. Um, some of you have a, a garage that is very clean, neat, and orderly. Let me see a show of hands. Who are my neat, who are the neat folks? You're orderly. You know, everything has a every place has a thing, and everything is in its place. Raise your hands. Don't be afraid. We only have a few of you. How many? are like me and you have more things in your garage than supposed to be in there <laughs> okay that's a majority uh it wasn't a contest i wish i were like the few who are really organized i kind of wish i was i wish i could go in my garage and find exactly what i need when i need it i have purchased things twice because i couldn't find the first one that i had but Ultimately, it's not that important to me. And there are a lot of things in life that we can not abound in. There are a lot of things in life we can be lukewarm about. But Jesus Christ shouldn't be one of those things. And, and the church and church work and serving and, and trying to reach the lost or reclaim, reclaim those who've fallen away, that should not be what we just get by with. So Philippians 1, 21, um, back up just a second. Yep. There we go. Philippians 1, 21, Paul says, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. So if you died tonight, what would that be? What would that mean for you? What would it mean for your life, just you, if you died tonight? Paul makes a statement. Paul's a Christian. He's a faithful Christian walking with God. He says, if I die, I go to heaven. Or I go to paradise. I go, I go to where God is. I go to a good place. It's good for me from here on if I die. That's what he's saying. And if you're in Christ, walking with Christ, and you die, it's gain. Make sense? Now, what if you live another five years? I don't know how many more years you expect to live, but I would imagine each of us have a relative, relative number that we expect to live, don't we? Uh, we've got some young ones in here that can't even imagine the end of their life. Their, their future is so long. I remember being young. I mean, life, my future, I look forward to it because there was so much ahead of me, I thought. Uh, assuming I would live to a ripe old age. But we all kind of have a number in our head. Let's say it's five years. If you die in five years, instead of dying tonight, what is different about the kingdom? What is different about God's work? What will you have accomplished in five years of still being one of God's servants alive on earth? What will it be? And, and that's what tonight's lesson is about. What, what am I doing for God? Um, you might say, preacher, I'm not in great health. It's kind of all I can do to get here to worship. That's all I can do. And I would encourage you, if that's your status, or any of us, the most you can do is to be a prayer warrior. And every one of us in this room can be a prayer warrior. If you could not make it any more than tonight, you can be a prayer warrior. And it is one of the most effective things. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Who's righteous? The saints are righteous. Who are the saints? Christians. Who are the Christians? That's us. You're righteous. If you're walking with God, a, a saved believer, you're righteous. 
we all need to be um, serving God and useful to God, helping the kingdom go forward, right? And so another five years, hopefully for you, it means fruitful work for God. It means a, a lot of things, a lot of good things would happen because you are serving every day, trying to bring glory to God's name. Hopefully that's what it means. Another example of this, kind of what it looks like, um, Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 19, he says, Although I'm free, I'm free from all. I've made myself a servant to all, that I might win more to them, win more of them. To the Jews, I became a Jew in order to win the Jews. He goes on to say, To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law. Not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside of the law. To the weak, I became weak. And he, he goes on and on. What's he saying? He's trying to win lost people to Christ. And he's saying, whatever they were, whoever they were, whatever status in life or, or stage in life they were at, I tried to relate to them. I tried to connect with them. Have you ever tried to befriend someone or develop a closer relationship with someone? Uh, maybe an extreme example of that is when you, when you date someone, lo and behold, all of a sudden you have an interest in whatever they like. Maybe not really, but you like them. You know? Am I the only man that went shopping when I was dating my wife? Went shopping quite a bit. I liked her. Um, I don't enjoy shopping, but I was trying to win her. And Paul says, I'm trying to win lost people. So I try to relate to them. Who are you doing that with? Who are you trying to reach? Who do you think about? Who are you praying about? You can pray for someone who's wandered away from the flock. Pray for them, pray for them, pray for them. Now let's, let's do something. Let's, let's call them. Let's message them. Let's, let's see them. Let's visit them. Let's encourage them. Do something. Verse 24, he says, do, not, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. We're running a race. And Scripture tells us we don't know how much time we have. When, when the uh, flood happened in Sand Springs... The river was rising. Now we have, we have uh, a few members that lived kind of in danger area. Quite a, quite a neighborhood that's next to the river, Arkansas River. So the river is rising and it's getting more and more dangerous, but it had not flooded yet, had not flooded the houses yet, and it, but it was close. And so there was a lot of talk about how much water are they letting out of the dam, which of course affects uh, where we are. And one day, I get a call from one of our members whose uncle is a fireman in Sand Springs, and she says, listen, they're not telling everyone this, but what my uncle tells me is, today they're letting out more, and it's going to flood today. So I get off the phone with her, and I call one of our members who lives in that floodplain. It's one of our elders' wives, and so her and her husband, I call her, and I say, what are you thinking? Because there comes that time when you've got to get, if you have, you get whatever out of your house you can. It ended up flooding her house five feet. So five feet in her house underwater. Um, but I, so I call and say, what are you thinking? She says, well, I don't know. We're kind of going back and forth. We're not sure. I said, what I just heard was they're going to let out more and it's going to flood today. And she said, well, I guess we better do something. So um, we're set up in Sand Springs with our church to where we can send out a mass text. So I sent out kind of an APB saying, uh, kind of SOS, anyone who can help meet here, you know, does anyone have a trailer? What do you have that we might could use? One of our members calls me. He says, I've got an enclosed, a large enclosed trailer. I've got a truck that can pull it. You're welcome to both. So I run over to his house. 
getting this truck happens to be a manual thank goodness i know how to drive a manual it's not a mustang but i can still drive it and uh so i do now i've never i've never pulled a big trailer like this and so i'm i'm pretty white knuckled doing this too shifting and driving and looking and, and checking my mirrors and trying not to uh to wreck this thing but i get it over there someone else uh related has has got a hold of a u-haul so we have two big trucks we've got about um within an hour we have about 20 people there and it is all hands on deck and we are hoofing it and we get a lot of their stuff uh not all of it but we 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 got really all that they could uh hope to get in that kind of scenario we loaded up both trucks um when we left it wasn't long after the water starts coming they sounded the siren. you know they kind of gave the sirens and the police drive around and all this but they really did with the the residents really didn't get enough notice you look at ephesians 5 15 it says look carefully then how you walk not as unwise but as wise making the best use of the time because the days are evil how much time do we have when when you die your time let's say you die and you're walking with god faithfully so you're good but when you die you have no more opportunity to rescue someone else and when jesus comes back if jesus comes tonight if we hear the trumpet and that's it we have no more no more opportunity do we everything is set in stone from that point forward eternal souls and so we think i wonder sometimes if we would not have been better to be in the first century because we here we are two thousand years later do we really think jesus is coming any day i don't think so do we really think our time is short I, it doesn't seem like it and so i want to remind you and encourage you tomorrow may be our last day who are we trying to help who are we trying to rescue who saw when that ran out my sister that's it what it's about 30 minute it's about a 30 minute timer give or take um, I can watch it for a little bit I uh, no. Nah. how long can you watch it how long can you sit and watch this but eventually it runs out and scripture tells us Jesus is going to come back at a time people don't expect it, it'll be a day just like today and so we need to have our foot on the throttle if there's something you've been putting off if you've been putting off talking to someone or encouraging someone tonight is a good time to text them or call them and say hey I was just thinking about you I just want you to know I'm praying for you I care about you I mean you, you God will help you God will help give you words but we need to have our foot on the gas don't we if you're here tonight and you are not a Christian if you're not saved if you've never given your life to Christ never turned from sin never had your old self buried in baptism sins washed away if you've never become a Christian why are you putting it off let us help you with that if there's if you have questions about that stay afterwards we'll answer questions we'll help you the devil will put all kinds of things in your way let us help you if there's something you need please come while we stand and sing